First question is from Evan Brandenburg. What do you recommend for maintaining performance while cutting? Maintaining performance while cutting. Oh, that's a good question because we always talk about maintaining muscle and it depends on your, you know, what you're doing, what your performance uh, measures are. Like, is it for endurance? Is it for strength? Ultimately, um, you know, when you're cutting, if you cut too hard, regardless of what type of performance you're looking for, you're probably going to notice some performance losses. In other words, if your calories are too far below what you're burning, you're going to find yourself hitting the wall while you're trying to, to train. So number one, I would say keep your cut mild. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Don't do a crash cut. I, I would I would say try not to eat less than mm -hmm. or have more than, excuse me, uh, maybe a a 300, 400 calorie deficit at the most is where I would kind of. Yeah. Well, this is why we kind of would always talk about mini bolt or mini cuts, uh, is a better strategy for that too. Cause I'm always worried about that. Like, you know, dropping them and reducing, uh, performance quite a bit. Cause if I'm in a, in a big cut, oh man, like going back into a heavy lifting day, you just, it, it's a fact. You're just not going to be as strong and, and, uh, you're not going to, your output isn't going to be the same. So you just kind of have to factor that in. Well, yeah. if performance is, it depends on like, what's your, what's more of a focus is the cut more of a focus or is the performance more of a, of a focus? Yeah. Because if the performance was more of a focus then I actually wouldn't even cut calories at all. Hmm. I would, I would increase performance by increasing the, the volume or increasing the, the so just burning the, more. Yeah. The duration that you're doing it. So if uh -huh. I like, for example, you know, run faster, jump higher, I don't know what we're talking about. But whatever the performance uh, markers that you're looking at, hmm. uh, and you want to get cut, I would increase the amount of whatever it is that I'm doing, but I wouldn't reduce my calories. So I think that's one of the surefire ways to help keep performance up without losing a bunch of muscle mass or losing performance. Just turn that volume up, right? Without yeah. and this is what this is actually similar to the conversation that I was having with my brother-in-law. I was like, you know, if you if you have a day that, and it's computing that you've burned, you know, five six thousand calories. You know, you don't want to only eat 3,000 or 20. I mean, try and get up. I mean, obviously, you're not going to probably eat 6,000, but have a, a pretty healthy day of eating. You know, don't don't constrict that much because if you do, more than likely, you will end up eventually Yeah, and I would also just monitor your performance. So if you're cutting and your performance is starting to suffer a lot, stop the cut, go to maintenance, increase your calories a little bit once performance comes back up, mm -hmm. then get back into the cut a little bit. And see what happens. Yeah, you have undulated to, a bit for sure. Undulated a bit if the performance is you know super important to keep protein intake high. Typically, especially if strength is important for whatever performance you're looking for, high protein intake has been shown to maintain uh, muscle mass and strength uh, better than lower protein diets when a cut is being employed. I would also look at supplements like creatine. Creatine is a non-calorie strength improving supplement. It it will reliably increase strength in pretty much anybody that takes it. It's a very, very small percentage of people that won't notice strength gains from creatine. And creatine is not a, a it doesn't have calories. So you could still stay low calorie. In fact, if your if your calories drop and you decrease your meat consumption, mm. you may be con you know decreasing your natural creatine consumption because that's where it's found. No, that's a great point. This yeah. is one of those times where we don't recommend supplements that often, right? We're always going the all natural as possible. But here's a great example of where mm. I think creatine has a ton of value. Cut when you're cutting and you're looking for performance. Nutrient timing also can make not a huge difference, but it can make a small no, difference. Oh, that's another incredible. Yeah, point. yeah, yeah. A, I mean, simply that's another thing that yeah, I've for always this given, case especially. Someone like that, like before you go and do whatever it is that is, whether it be, you know, like my brother-in-law, uh, downhill mountain biking, if you're playing basketball, a sport, before you go into your athletic endeavor, you know, make sure you have a, a sufficient amount of calories going in and then, then you refuel like right afterwards. That's one of the best ways that you can make sure you keep Yeah, I would food. say um, you want to have a decent amount of calories, carbohydrates, proteins. Uh, a, at least a couple hours before your big, you know, competitive, whatever you're doing for, for your workout. And then like Adam said, have your calories afterwards. So if let's say you're working out today, a good chunk of your calories should be the, you know, one to two hours before your, your, your workout and after, and right after nutrient timing here makes uh, more sense. Not going to make a huge difference, but it makes enough of a difference to, for you to do this.